I'd like to wish everyone a warm welcome to this applicant briefing for the Global Incubator Programme USA. Uh, my name's Ian Fletcher from Innovate UK Edge and I'm the project manager for this incubator programme. Uh, so some housekeeping, we will be recording the briefing today um, and it'll be available for you to view early next week. Um, there's a link in the chat or there will be to the Innovate UK Edge website where you can view the programme application form as well as the recording when it's added uh, to the website next week. Next slide, please. Um, so the objective is briefing to provide as much information as possible about the program, with particular focus on the application process and how the six month program is structured. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome fellow speakers and guests today, including John Hazel, uh, North America Partnership Manager for Innovate UK, Devin Dunn, Head of the Health Tech Accelerator at Texas Medical Center, another colleague joining us today from Innovate UK, Texas Medical Center and Department for International Trade. So the agenda for today, uh, John is going to introduce Innovate UK and its global programmes. I'm going to run through the application process and requirements around that. Devin is going to introduce the Texas Medical Centre, provide an overview of the programme. Then we're going to have an insight from a UK business that's been closely engaged with Texas Medical Centre over the last 12 months. And then at the end, we're going to have a, a Q&A session just to go through any questions uh, delegates or participants might have on the, uh, the, the incubator programme itself. So to start the session off, I'm going to hand you over to John Hazel from Innovate UK. Thanks, Ian, and uh, and, and welcome everyone. Again, um, extending my apologies as well on behalf of the, the lack of uh, uh, video. Um, you can see my face. It is still the same. I do still look like that, but you won't be able to see me moving, so apologies for that. Um, next slide, please. Um, so as Ian said, I'm the partnership manager for North America, but I'm also responsible for the global incubator program that we run with Innovate UK. Um, and I'm just going to give you a quick overview for those who aren't familiar what Innovate UK is um, and our global programs um, before really focusing on all the detail from, from me and, and TMC. Um, as you're all here because you are all interested in innovation and, and global activities, um, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is there. Um, any more global activities that come up in the future, you'll be able to, to see those and they might be of interest to you. Next slide, please. Um, so if we start at the beginning, uh, so if we start really with, with UKRI, um, so UKRI is the UK Research and uh, Innovation, um, and this brings together the seven research councils, um, but Innovate UK and Research England are also part of UKRI as well. Next slide, please. And with regards to Innovate UK, our, our mission is very simple. Um, we are the UK's innovation agency and everything we do is all about supporting business-led innovation across all sectors, technologies um, in the UK. Next slide, please. Uh, we do this in three ways. Uh, we inspire, involve and invest. So inspire is all about making the opportunity visible and compelling and for you. Um, second is involve, so involving the relevant organizations and bringing people and stakeholders together. And then the third is, is invest, which is convening the resources needed, um, which could include funding. Next slide, please. Um, so we believe innovation is the lifeblood of business. That's why everything we do is all about supporting innovation. Next slide, please. Um, and we know companies need to do a lot to innovate, um, you know, from finding the right business model to raising investment, to actually developing your products and services. And there's a few other other things down there, and I'm sure there are many, many more. Um, but innovation is inherently difficult, um, and we know the UK companies need to do this, and really we're here to help you do that. Next slide, please. Um, to date, we have delivered over 4.6 billion um, of investment since 2007, and this has helped fund over 15,000 projects with over 11,000 um, organisations. Uh, from this, we've created over 100,000 jobs um, and added 32.2 billion back to the economy. So in summary, for every pound we invest, we deliver seven pounds back to the economy. Next slide, please. Um, if you're interested in more about what Innovate UK does, um, you can download our plan for action um, and you can see there on the strategic themes um, uh, column or row um, that global opportunities is a significant um, theme within our plan for action. Next slide, please. 
Um, so why are we interested in supporting companies going global? Um, well, essentially, you know, we want to help UK businesses understand new markets um, and gain insights to allow them to explore these opportunities. Um, this can help build an understanding of the culture, laws and legislation and, and really help you de-risk your innovation as you're going global and protect your business when working overseas. And to do this, we have a number of different mechanisms um, from this program and also bilateral and multilateral competitions. Next slide, please. If we take a summary of our global tools, on the left hand side, you can see they're delivered by the KTN in green. There are two workshops and missions. Um, essentially, this is where we work with the KTN and we go to different um, countries and we try and understand what the opportunities are um, for UK business to, to grow and scale. And then on the right hand side, we have three interventions, which will then use dependent on those missions. And um, one is global business innovation program. So this is where we take a cohort of around 15 companies um, for a week to really understand what the opportunity is in those markets and start to build collaborations. We then have the global incubator program, which we're going to talk a lot more about today, which is essentially a deeper dive following a global business innovation program, which spans over 12 to 18 months. Um, but is essentially working with a, an incubator in region for a period of six months to really help develop those long term relationships. And then the third intervention we have is bilateral R&D competitions. So this is working with a stakeholder in region where we will both co fund and um, competitions to support companies to collaborate and fund their innovations. Next slide please. So the key elements of the global the global <laughs> global incubator program which we're here to talk about today. Um, it's sector specific um, and we have a number of these um, all around the world and it really is about trying to immerse UK companies into the ecosystem. It is a 12 to 18 month programme which usually includes three to six months within the incubator which we'll talk about a bit later and it is a tailored programme of support that is appropriate for the market and the sector. Um, one thing to point out is that in our name you know we are Innovate UK so everything we do is about supporting business-led innovation so it is not um, purely focused on trade. Um, this is all about innovations. This is supporting your innovation journey. Of course, there will be customer discovery as part of that, probably for piloting or looking at collaborations, but it really is focused on the innovation part of your journey to grow and scale. And we're looking to target high growth companies um, that have the opportunity to scale in the future. Next slide, please. Um, a typical programme consists of usually four stages, so prepare, participate, pursue and exploit. And essentially we're at the prepare stage, we're going through recruitment and selection. Once we've done that and we've recruited the successful companies, there'll be some preparation workshops to prepare you for the in-market visit. That's all about participate, where a first market visit will immerse you in the ecosystem, working with the incubator. Then there will be the pursue part, which is really focusing on those virtual workshops over three to six months. Um, followed by a final um, in-market uh, meeting and showcase. And then stage four, which is really continuing to work with Innovate UK Edge. Um, once the, uh, the incubator program is finished, to continue to exploit the opportunities and everything you've learned on your innovation journey. Next slide, please. And final slide. Um, so, you know, the opportunity to go global. So, you know, 99% of the population live elsewhere and 97% of the worldwide GDP elsewhere. So we believe that, you know, helping UK companies go global is a great opportunity. Um, and again, I'd like to thank you for your interest in the programme and, and wish you the best of luck. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, John. Next slide, please, Hannah. Uh, so I'm just going to walk you through the, the application process for the, for the program. Um, but I think it's probably important just to provide a bit more context to the program. So this is the first uh, health tech incubator program that, that we've run. I'm really excited by the interest we've received in the program so far. So this program is part of the BioBridge collaboration. It was established between the Department of International Trade and Texas Medical Center in 2018 with the aim of boosting UK exports and driving forward scientific innovation. So this is a six month program designed to help internationally focused health tech companies to validate their entry strategy for the US market. To support this, Innovate UK will fund a soft landing into the US market through the use of incubator facilities at Texas Medical Center. 
The programme's focused on market discovery and, and will provide strategic connections to participants via the TMC team and the wider health tech ecosystem in the US. Innovate UK will also fund two market visits that will take place in May and November in 2023 as well as an intensive package support delivered by the team at Texas Medical Center. We recognize that each participant will have own objectives for the program and we'll make sure that we tailor the support requirements around those objectives. Next slide, please. So in terms of the eligibility for the program, companies must be a UK registered business. They need to be an innovation, innovative and focused on the digital health or medical device sector and a full list of the priority areas will be in the next slide. Uh, the company must be able to commit 15 plus hours per week to the programme requirements. This is an intensive programme and participants will get out of it what they put in. Based on our experience delivering other incubator programmes, this is the average time per week that needs to be dedicated to the programme in order to get the most out of it. This includes attending group workshops, undertaking independent market discovery work, visits to market and attending regular check-ins with the programme teams. Market discovery will also be supported by the teams at Texas Medical Centre in Innovate UK Edge. There will also be two market visits, as I said before, in May and November next year, and the companies will be expected to, both, to attend both visits, as well as spend time in, in the US if they need to during that six-month programme. Next slide, please. So we're looking to recruit 16 health tech companies. It could be developing technologies across a broad range of digital health and medical device sectors. And I'll just pause for a moment to let you read through those sectors which are on the screen. So these sectors are highlighted by TMC that have most interest to them and the US market. If you feel your solution does not fit into any of these sectors, please feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to give you feedback on your business and whether it could be a good fit for the program or not. Next slide, please. So the application period is open now uh, and we're expecting a high number of applications for this program. So the advice is to get your application in early and not to leave it just before the deadline of the 27th of January. So once we've passed the, uh, the application deadline, we'll be undertaking shortlist interviews between the 13th and the 24th of February. And then we'll look to confirm the cohort about the 3rd of March, 2023. Once the cohort is confirmed, we'll then run through a period of, of onboarding with the companies that have been selected. So that includes two onboarding workshops where we'll introduce a strategic development plan for, for the businesses that are participated on the programme. And this process will be introduced during that during those workshops to embed the knowledge and learning within the, the context of the programme. Next slide, please. So when we are assessing the applications, uh, we'll be looking for the following areas. Programme fit. So the company must be a highly innovative company that fits with the programme, i.e. digital health or medical devices. We're looking for capability. The company must have sufficient expertise and resources to exploit the opportunities from the program. Must have ambition. So we must show ambition for growth and outline how participating in the program can help the company achieve this. There must be a product market fit. So the product has the potential to fit with the ecosystem in the US market. And there must be a level of innovation impact. So the company should offer a solution as a positive impact on the healthcare sector. Next slide, please. So final slide for me. So what makes a good application? So it should demonstrates a clear healthcare impact? Does it increase health healthcare quality? Does it decrease healthcare cost? Does it drive healthcare provider revenue? It should clearly explain the size of the market problem and the impact of that problem on the customer. So how does the technology solve that market problem? What's the value proposition? Demonstrate growth potential of the technology and what the size of the problem might be in the US market. And also provide an understanding of what the competition and competitive landscape might look like for the for the product. Is it unique in the market? It should also demonstrate the applicant's ability to manage operations in UK while exploring opportunities elf, elsewhere. So, how will you manage the, the development of UK growth activities alongside program participation? How will participation be resourced, and which members of the team will be involved? 
And finally, it should explain why it's now a good time for the company to expand it internationally, particularly the US. So why do you believe the market problem exists in the US? What do you know already? What don't you know? What relationships do you want to cultivate during the program? And the advice is be specific, not general. Demonstrate there's a plan in place for the US market. So in summary, what we're looking for are clarity of answers and supporting evidence and strategic rationale of why you want to go into the US market. So now I'm going to hand over to Devin to introduce Texas Medical Center and walk you through the structure of the program. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ian. Um, and before we dive in, I just wanted to take an opportunity to introduce myself. I'm Devin Dunn. I am the head of the Health Tech Accelerator here at TMC Innovation. And in my role, I have the opportunity to work with all of the digital health and medical device companies that come through our current programs. I'm particularly thrilled about this new program because I do have a special place in my heart for working with companies coming out of the UK. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, just a few short years ago, I was actually on your side of presentations like these. I was one of the first employees at a London-based startup called Puma or Meadowpad, as we were originally called. And we started out in a very dingy basement on Buckingham Gate. And after three wonderful years in London, over 100 new employees and a few acquisitions, I moved back to the US to help that team start to think about their US market entry. Um, I know that the startup life is not for the faint of heart, and we had many ups and downs over those years, uh, US market entry being one of the most challenging. And I'm very honored to be in a position now where I get to help so many teams and founders who are embarking on a similar journey. So with that, we can move to the next slide. And I'm excited to tell you a little bit about uh, Texas Medical Center, TMC. We are a nonprofit organization that works with our over 60 plus member institutions to drive healthcare and life science research and commercialization. And with that, we can move to the next slide. So if you've never been to Houston, when you fly in, there are really two skylines. One, your typical downtown, and one that looks like this, which is our medical campus. Um, so across the medical campus, we have 11,000 beds. Our member institutions see 10 million patient encounters a year. 120,000 people come to work here every day. And that really creates, if you just take the medical campus alone, the eighth largest business district in the country. Obviously that attracts a lot of research dollars as well, whether that be NIH funding, uh, clinical trials, or uh, notably here in Texas, the CPRIT, the Cancer Prevention Research Institute of Texas. Next slide. A few of our notable member institutions include the world's largest children's hospital, Texas Children's, the world's largest cancer hospital with MD Anderson, as well as premier academic institutions like Baylor College of Medicine, UT Health Science Center, and a and Next slide. At TMC Innovation, we focus on bringing high quality startups into our ecosystem to learn and grow. In thinking about how we activate that life science cluster and supporting growing companies, we think about primarily four areas. The first being talent and innovation program, like our accelerator programs. Uh, the second being venture investment. We have a $50 million venture fund that we use to support companies with which we build a long-term relationship. We have global partners like Johnson & Johnson, ABB Robotics, and of course our BioBridge relationships like that with the UK. We think a lot about the infrastructure that companies need to grow here in Houston and the US, which of course uh, is the physical space and resources that companies need to grow. You'll hear a little bit more about the cookie factory or which we now call the innovation factory in, in just a minute. If we move to the next slide. A 
I'm very fortunate to work with a team uh, that's all extraordinarily passionate about supporting founders. On the call today, we have Ashley Francis, who leads all things operations. Our amazing associate director, Emily Reiser, who's been with the team for four years and has probably lost count of the number of companies she'd work with. I venture that it's over 100. Our program manager, Eliana, whose boundless energy makes literally everything happen. Uh, in addition to the core team that will be supporting this program, we'll be working with entrepreneurs and residents like JR, who's pl played a large role in building several businesses and currently leads our venture fund. Jason Sakamoto leads our biodesign program and has deep expertise in medical devices. Anna Vu manages our community and alumni, advisors, member institutions, and investors. And of course, our director, Tom Luby, who joins us from a long career in life sciences, most recently leading J Labs here in Houston. And if we can move to the next slide, we'll just share a very brief video that will really bring to life uh, what it feels like to be here at TMC Innovation. It looks like our sound may not be working. I can just hop in and talk over this video. So this is the glimpse of the cookie factory or the innovation factory. Uh, the pods in the background are uh, what will be accessible to participants of this program for the two weeks and the six months of your time with us. It's not just a place to office out of, but a real community together with our embedded partners of ABB Robotics that you're seeing now, as well as J&J next door. Uh, with typically about 80 startup companies in residence at any given time. So we think about the space that we have available for not just working, but also collaborating and meeting each other. At the entrance of the video, you saw a Surgical Innovation Day event, which we had the pleasure of having Yesh back for. And it's just another way that we look to provide value and bring together our health system partners and our startups together uh, so that they can find new areas of collaboration. As we walk down the hall of the innovation factory, you'll see more of our co working space. Uh, our biodesign program, we found typically two or three companies each year in a venture studio model based on needs finding. These entrepreneurs and residents are also great resources for international companies that are looking to get insights into clinical and business leaders here that have been embedded with the medical community. Uh, to the right and left, you'll see co-working space. Again, not just office space, but places where people can meet and collaborate. Across the hall is the partner suite where we have executive offices and some venture funds in residence as well. Along this hallway is where Ritz crackers and Oreos used to be made. Turning left, we'll see notable serial entrepreneur, Billy Cohn, uh, who has a legacy training with the inventors of the artificial heart here in Houston. So cardiovascular device and surgical device continue to be a strong suit for us in the region. And we've supported many companies in those spaces along the way. This is the Johnson Johnson Center for Device Innovation. It's unique in the world for really bringing together the business units of J&J, &J, like Ethicon, Depew, and others, providing those business insights to our community, um, and those will be accessible to you as well. Across the hall, we're building new graduate wet lab space. So for those who need combined lab office space that are outgrowing that shared bench space that we see at J Labs down the hall, um, this will be open in time for you all to visit us in the spring of next year. This is a rendering of what it'll look like. Again, we think about providing that space as the baseline 
and then bringing communities together through events like these so that we can all share, learn, and grow. We talk about collaboration, but it really leads to direct business um, opportunities. For example, several of our tenants have collaborated to do business together, um, and we can share more about that as we go. Sorry for the audio not working. Thanks for your patience with us. Thank you, Emily, for that lovely virtual tour. Uh, appreciate you jumping in on that. And if we can move to the next slide. So while this is a new program that we're incredibly excited uh, to be working with Innovate UK on, it is not our first rodeo, as, as they say, supporting UK startups. We've worked with startups like you see here for several years. Um, we always have found UK companies that are ready to explore the US market a really wonderful fit for our community. Historically, they've been looking for US market value proposition validation, clinical champions, clinical trial sites, and help thinking through building their initial US teams. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the huge role that Autumn Waska and the Department of International Trade has played in partnering with us to bring highly engaged founders and companies to TMC every year. In our most recent cohort, we worked with Cardmedic, a very dynamic team that grew up in the pandemic. We've helped them think through US market segmentation and what their initial ideal customer profile looks like, exploring market segments from enterprise health systems to federally qualified health centers. And to tell us a little more about what it's like to be a UK company exploring US market entry and working with the TMC team, I am pleased to introduce to you, Yesh, if we can move to the next slide. Yesh is the CEO and founder of Scalpel. And Yesh, if you're able to unmute, I'd love to invite you just to quickly introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Scalpel. Sure, thanks very much, Devin. Can you hear me? We can. Oh yeah, perfect. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Yesh. Um, Emily, uh, amazing video. I miss Houston so badly right now looking at that. Uh, my name is Yesh, everyone. Um, I lead Scalpel. Uh, Scalpel is a health tech startup. We are, we are based in London, but I want to keep telling that we are an international company. Now that we are working with TMC, we are moving into the US market quite significantly. We are focused around improving surgical safety. Uh, we are building a surgical intelligence platform uh, that is powered by computer vision. Amazing, thank you. Yes, do you mind telling us a little bit about what initially attracted you to the ecosystem here while you were planning US market entry and then a bit about kind of what you've learned along the way in working with the team? Sure, um, so firstly, uh, I should, I'm super excited to be part of this discussion because I think we've been, uh, we have very good relationships both with uh, Innovate UK, uh, Innovate UK Edge, and TMC. Uh, we have been funded by Innovate UK uh, quite significantly in the form of Digital Health Technology Catalyst in the past, Innovate UK Continuity Awards, Innovate UK Loan. Um, so, you know, I think I would keep, I keep saying with my co-founder, Innovate UK is our largest investor. Um, and they trusted in us like way before than you know, private equity investors did. Uh, and so I'm really, really thankful for that. And I'd like to pay back in any way possible. But having said that, TMC, on the other hand, uh, is super exciting. We, we have always been thinking about the US market. Uh, and one of the things uh, around surgery, around health tech, is that there is a lack of industry-specific accelerators in the world today. Um, you know, when you think of a health tech accel when you think of an accelerator, you think of places like Y Combinator or tech stores and other, other things, but they are not specifically health tech or digital health, which makes it really hard for, you know, for, for an entrepreneur to, to convey the message. That is so different when you come to TMC. Um, so we actually came across TMC a long time ago. Uh, we didn't get through the first time. Uh, there was no program like this back in the day. So we had to uh, fail twice and get in the third time. Um, and I've, Every single time we applied, we took the feedback and we walked in once again for the next round of applications for their uh, health tech accelerator. Um, I should thank 
uh, Autumn from Department of International Trade. Um, she um, looked at our application and she gave some very nice feedback saying, yes, this looks like crap. You need to go back and speak uh, in common English. It seems you are speaking something else. Um, so, you know, all that kind of feedback kind of helped us get into TMC Accelerator. Um, TMC Accelerator, the way we were, uh, we attended it back in the day, it was two parts. We had a two-week bootcamp uh, sometime around the same time last year uh, and a six-month uh, program, uh, which is an accelerator program itself. Um, I think the biggest value that we've learned uh, working with the TMC is firstly, I got a chance to meet great people, uh, people who understand the need for innovation uh, and people who have uh, a lot of interest in implementing that innovation. We got a chance to meet a lot of clinical champions. Um, we used to have monthly hurdles with the whole TMC team um, where we get a chance to pitch our business once again, uh, learn from them, understand the value proposition, understand the market potential, um, and it really validate your hypothesis, right? So that was the biggest value add that we've gained uh, working with TMC. Uh, but personal level, I've made so many friends, um, all the ones in this call, uh, Emily, Devin, Eliana, Ashley, but also many more uh, who are not on this call because I think what, what I've learned is to pitch Scalpel differently, um, not, as a, not as a company that makes surgery safer, but as a company that is transforming the way inventory management is managed or the way surgery itself will be changed in the future. I think that point of view shift has happened only because of, I've attended the TMC program. Um, so all thanks to everybody on this panel. Thank you, Yash. That's incredibly helpful. Do you have any last words of wisdom or advice for, for fellow founders who were in the same position that you were at a few years back? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there are a few things I would remember. Firstly, if you if you don't get a chance, uh, I see there are about 69 companies or people who are uh, in this call. So apply. If you don't get a chance, apply once again. These, these are great people. You want to work with them anyway. Um, second thing, if you get a chance to go to TMC and work uh, and be a part of the ecosystem, I would say prepare a list of your assumptions that you want to validate, at, especially with respect to the US market and validate them at you, in a, within the time that you have there. Your time is short, so make the most of it by planning well in advance. Um, I would also say that you might have to, if, especially if you're flying from the UK, like I did, I had to fly uh, once every two weeks. Uh, I was also operating in the UK as a CEO, so my job was essentially to grow in the UK and also ensure the US market is uh, growing. So plan to travel more, keep your uh, calendars quite flexible. Um, the biggest advice that I got was on my very first day at TMC uh, huddle, um, where they said I, in a one hour in a one hour huddle I pitched for I don't know I think 35 40 minutes. I've been constantly talking, um, and then Jr, uh, who is uh, one of our advisors, uh, he he told me just shut up and ask more questions. Yes, you are not asking. So I would give that to most of my other colleagues here. Ask more. Um, Re read mum test, read all the books that you need, you need to read about how to ask more questions, but ask and learn rather than uh, keep, you know, keep pitching. But again, all the very best, uh, have great, ex have uh, a very good experience at this, but you know, this is just a start. There is a long time relationship that you can build with TMC. They are super aligned in terms of making healthcare a better place. Thank you, Yash. I think we would agree with all of that advice. Um, really appreciate you. We might pop back if we have a few minutes at the end um, to chat a bit more, but thank you. And if we could move to the next slide, we'll dive a little deeper into the program, what we're trying to accomplish, and how we'll structure that time, some of which we've, we've started to touch on. So if we could go to the next slide. In terms of what we expect participants uh, to get out of the program, it's really the opportunity to learn and gain that detailed understanding of the US healthcare ecosystem and those key aspects that we believe are critical to growth and success here. 
we will look to support building relationships with decision makers, investors, service providers, importantly, other founders who have been on this same journey and the extended, extended TMC advisor network. And really critically, the opportunity to get feedback and test those hypotheses that Yash mentioned. So working with the advisors and our team to identify those next steps in exploring, uh, exploring and preparing for US market entry. If we could go to the next slide. As we mentioned, we plan to start the more formal part of the program with a two week in market experience here in Houston, here in the TMC Innovation Factory. There we'll build that foundational knowledge about the US healthcare system, our ecosystem, and that will really serve as a springboard into the remainder of the program. Our team will spend this time getting to know each company and founder in the program to really use this knowledge to create personal recommendations and focus areas throughout the program. And that'll be based on, on your particular company, product, and stage. We'll also spend time preparing for a final showcase in November. The next four months will be virtual programming where we'll hit on the topics that we find are most key to growing companies and exploring the US market, thinking about what it means for your product, your tech stack, your regulatory strategy, what value propositions resonate and how to go about thinking about clinical validation, market access and go to market strategies. The key aspects to building your US team to support your growth here and how to think about fundraising in a US context and pitching to a US audience. All of those sessions will take place from 1 to 6 p.m. UK time. The program will culminate with a second two week uh, in market experience where we'll continue to learn, network, and have the opportunity to showcase your company to our entire ecosystem with an on stage event. We can move to the next slide. While you're here, as you saw Emily pointed out, uh, the pods within our space, you'll have dedicated collaboration space that's available to you here in the Innovation Factory. And while we are planning for those two two-week experiences here in Houston, we welcome you to join us as often is as practical for you. Next and final slide for this section. Finally, we just wanted to touch on what has historically been a good fit for international companies looking to engage with our community. You shouldn't think of this as a checklist of things that you must possess all of these, but instead a general guide. Uh, because, the focus, because of the focus areas in our ecosystem, we do find that companies who have an ultimate buyer or end user that is either a physician or health system will get the most value. On the digital side, typically companies that have had some significant traction in the UK or elsewhere uh, have a team in place to manage that existing business. As Yesh mentioned, you, you'll be managing two worlds, uh, your existing business and thinking about new market entry. And uh, companies and teams that have thought about how their solution uh, resonates in the US market, so how it might reduce cost or generate revenue are a good fit. On the medical device side, it's more likely that the US is a first market. I think we're increasingly seeing that, particularly with the changing dynamics with MDR and, and the FDA. Uh, initial efficacy data, and again, thoughts around proposed clinical studies uh, on the path to FDA clearance are typically a good starting point on the medical device side. And that that is it for us. We're incredibly excited to launch this program and looking forward to, to reviewing all the applications. I'll echo what Ian mentioned. Please get them in early. Um, we're excited to start taking a look. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Devin.
a really insightful presentation and also thanks Yesh for his insight to working at TMC recently. Um, so we're going to now open the, the floor to, to questions. So um, if you can raise your hands, my colleague Hannah will, will monitor the, the questions coming in and allow you to, to share those questions with us to the panel. So uh, fire away. Emma, I think, have you got a question there, Emma? Uh, yes, I have. Hi, thank you. Um, thanks for a very informative uh, presentation, first off. I was wondering, are you, is this programme aimed primarily at businesses that are looking for VC or other external funding? Um, I noticed that there was uh, the mention of a showcase in November next year, and I just wondered who the audience of that was? Is it is it people that are there seeking to invest or is it buyers? Is it a mix of both? Um, I also note on the sign-up sheet for this um, webinar that there was a question about if, if companies were looking for investment. And I, I just wondered if that is kind of the ultimate goal is to take on companies that are seeking to expand through um, private uh, and VC funds uh, external investment or if you're looking to take on companies that are looking for kind of organic growth as well. Uh, I'll pick up to start with maybe colleagues from, from TMC might want to add um, some further clarification. Um, so thanks for the question, Claire. Um, I, I think, you know, companies will inevitably at some point be looking for, for funding. So I think that that question uh, is asked in the application form um, to give us an idea if, if, if that would be a focus for, for companies wanting to come onto the programme. But we're, it, it's not... Um, set in stone that companies have to be raising finance to come onto the program um so so companies that are looking to raise finance this current time that's absolutely fine in terms of applying for the program uh, another reason we asked the question um is to try and understand because raising funds can also take a lot of time uh within management teams um, during the program it just allows us to understand are there other things going on in the business that might distract the company during their, their participation on the program and if we obviously we take the application further we'd obviously ask questions around that about how how companies may resource the program alongside those uh those fundraising activities yeah so th thanks Ian. and just just to add a, a bit more on to that i mean and I mentioned it briefly in my presentation that I flew through quickly. Um, you know, it's all about supporting companies on, on their innovation journey. And we appreciate every company can, can potentially be at different stages. Um, so there's generic modules that cover up a thing that most companies will need, but then there'll be more um, prescriptive um, one to one mentoring, which will really focus on what individual companies want to get out of it as part of the program. And just to thank to build on that from our perspective uh, in terms of the showcase you mentioned uh, in November that will be kind of a multi stakeholder audience so that could be investors that could be buyers uh, advisors will will open that to really our entire ecosystem. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. I think Sean, Sean's up next to ask a question. Hi, thanks everyone. Sean Walsh here from AI Censure. Uh, this excellent support and opportunity comes uh, catch free as it were without an equity stake. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, so I, I, I can answer that one. So, so yes, so um, if you're not familiar with Innovate UK, as, as I mentioned, everything we do is about supporting you as UK businesses. So, so we don't take any equity with, with delivering the programme. Um, to support you and try and help you look at the US market. Um, what you do when you're in the US market, if you decide to work with partners and, and strike up different agreements with other parties with regarding equity, that, that would be up to you, but it's not a, it's not part of the programme. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Uh, next one is uh, Keel, I think, from Pep Health. I think he's just gone. Um, so we'll move down to Chris, Chris Arns. Yeah, hi. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, they, they mentioned in this one of the, Devin mentioned in one of the slides that their revenue was required. Is that a, an actual requirement that needs to be in place in order to be eligible to participate in the incubator? I can I can start and Ian and John may want to uh, chime in. For the companies we currently work with on the digital health side, we are typically looking for some initial traction that usually uh, gives us the, the data we need to engage with our ecosystem here. That being said, um, this is not a checklist. So if you have many of the other key qualities that we're looking for in our pre-revenue, I think that's, that's not a deal breaker. Ian and John, I don't know if you have any additional thoughts. Yeah, I, I, only that it's all about just, you know, match, you know, e each company is going to be at a, a different stage. Um, yeah. And also, you know, TMC have, have a certain, you know, level of experience of what, what they can provide to help companies succeed. So it's part of the application form and the information we get is all about trying to to match your aspirations and justification against, um, you know, what support the edge team and also TMC can provide and see if there's a, there's a good fit to, for both sides. Thanks, Thank John. Uh, next, Grace, if, if you wanna go ahead. Hi, Grace Hiltman from Trimedica. I was just wondering, do the lead and the support personnel, can they both attend the market visits or is it only the lead? I'll pick that one off. Um, yeah, we can arrange for um, multiple members of, of the team. The, the, the funding works for one um, participant per company, but if you wanted to have a second, third, fourth delegate attend with, with the group, that, that's absolutely fine. But you'd obviously need to pay that uh, those fees in, in full yourselves. Um, so so it's, it's limited in terms of the funding, but we, we, we're open to having uh, other members of the team join, join the group if it's going to add value to your participation. Okay, thank you. So the, there's no other other hands up at the moment. Um, I think there's one just come up, Carolina. Hello. I have a few questions. So we've got one here that says, can more than one team member partake? If so, can both attend the sessions at Houston? Yeah, I think we just answered that yeah, one, Sarita. Okay, no problem. Um, In terms of contact details, there's one there looking for uh, further contact details to discuss suitability. Yeah, I'll take that one. I think in the first instance, if you can direct any uh, inquiries to myself, you should have my my contact details from the Eventbrite communications you've been receiving. I'll also send a follow-up email over the next few days with um, summaries from today, including the slides, links to the application form and uh, the, the recording as well. And my contact details will be on there. So I'd encourage anyone with any particular queries to, to reach out to me. Uh, another one here. Will you be leaning towards further developed companies in this program? If it is a seed Series A stage, is the application likely to be successful? I can speak to that initially, and okay. I'm happy to have everyone jump in. Um, seed Series A. That's that's a great stage. We often work with with companies in that stage. I think uh, in terms of being more advanced uh, as an international company, we'd just be looking for um, a little bit of that initial validation uh, that you're kind of ready to start exploring the US market. 